This team right here is scaring me, okay? <sighs> what I normally do for these videos is, uh, I, I normally write down a sheet of paper, like the video that came out a couple hours ago, Michigan versus Michigan State. I wrote down, I wrote down a piece of paper, I got the stats, I got everything like that. This is my live reaction. The game ended, like, it's about 10 minutes till the Nebraska game. So the game ended about 5 minutes ago max. Uh, this is this is pretty much I mean right after the bat, Ohio State is scaring me. Um, this is coming straight from an Ohio fan, and I'm angry. I I mean, it may not seem like it right now, but I was absolutely pissed uh, at at Ohio State. Um, I'm surprised there's not holes in the wall because normally I would like to just kind of toss the tennis ball while watching. Really do really like watching anything. I like to be tossing something back and forth, and uh, this thing got tossed against my wall quite a lot. Uh, my chair was thrown on the ground quite a lot, the one I'm sitting in. It actually, I kind of broke it, but it's fine. Um, kind of broke it. This this game just angered me. We started off with a 96-yard touchdown drive in which we looked fantastic. We looked like a team that could challenge a te challenge Alabama, probably, or any other team. I'm not going to say Alabama is going to be for sure in the national championship, but we're going to be challenging... We could be the national champion if we could consistently put drives like that together, but we couldn't. We get an interception on that next drive. Well, Northwestern had a pretty good first drive. They stalled out. We get our ball at the four. We have a fantastic drive. They get the ball back. They throw an interception. We get the ball. We needed a touchdown right there. If we had gotten a touchdown right there, then we were just going to put in that dagger, and then I would trust my. I would trust our defense, honestly, that they weren't going to let up more than 20 points. They let up 20 points, but... And then I was hoping our offense could put up at least another touchdown or two field goals, however they want to do it. But we couldn't. We did get a field goal. We went up 10 to nothing. Uh, they came back, answered. Fantastic drive. Northwestern, the announcers kept saying that they are an underrated team. And as much as I want to believe that as an Ohio State fan, you know, I want to, I want to make excuses. I, there's not much, I mean, I don't think Northwestern's that talented of a football team. If you're a Northwestern fan, your team looked good. I don't know if that's because we're bad or if that's because you're good, but in my opinion, in Ohio State's fans' opinion, we are bad. And I think Northwestern's a decent team. Uh, I don't think they're the best team in the Big Ten uh, West. I don't think they're going to win the Big Ten West, but I think Northwestern is a solid team, but a team that Ohio State should be beating by 30. I wanted to come out here and I wanted to beat Northwestern 80 to nothing after last week's game. Um, obviously, that didn't happen. Obviously, I had to get scared. Northwestern should have tied that game up. They they got the ball down there uh, in the goal, in the red zone. Had a chance. Uh, threw it. That trick play, thought he had it. Malik Hooker made a fantastic play. Made, it made, had a really good goal line stand there at the end. Um, get stopping the quarterback on the read option, which killed us twice on that in this game. And he's not a fast quarterback. I mean, I don't care if the quarterback is slow or fast. If they run a type of offense where there's a chance for that, then the defensive end ha or the linebacker, whoever's job it is, safety, I don't care, whoever's job it is to make sure the quarterback doesn't keep it, has got to still stay there, no matter how many times they keep feeding the rock to the running back. I mean, I think it was a great play call because it was on like third and ten, third and eight or something. Um, but Hooker, fantastic drive. He was able to chase down that trick play. Uh, the guy was open. Hooker came, you know, he was like, the guy was open in the back of the end zone here. Hooker was like here, and he came and... It was kind of a bad throw, but I mean, it's a throw from a receiver. You can't expect it to be perfect. Um, they settled for a field goal. Um, both teams didn't have hardly any. I think there were only two, four penalties total, two by each team, for like 30 yards total. So both teams really disciplined today, uh, including just saw that Washington holds off Utah. I was I have watching that game on my iPad, um, and I just got the alert that they did. I'll probably make a recap video straight after this. Um, about that one. So, <sighs> our play calling is trash. As much as I want to believe our defense is solid, I, I think our defense is one of the top in the Big Ten. I think we're one of the top 25 defenses. I don't think we're that top five, top ten defense people are saying we are. I think we have a good defense. I think we're inexperienced. Um, I'll get more on that in a sec. But I think we're more inexperienced. And I don't think our defense is that solid because teams, can, teams Northwestern, 
Tulsa. Bowling Green didn't have as much success, but neither did Rutgers. But Tulsa and Northwestern teams that aren't supposed to be able to drive. Wisconsin, for all I care. They weren't supposed to have an offense. They're supposed to have a good running back. Um, they're supposed to do some uh, misdirection, which could confuse us a little bit. But they weren't supposed to have a quarterback that could throw the ball really accurately or good. You know, they weren't supposed to have that type of offense, but they did against us. They continuously drive, drove down the field. I think our defense steps it up when we get when they get on our side of the field, um, especially in the red zone. We're one of the best red zone defenses, and I think that is I think that's a true stat. Um, I don't know. This game right here, I think, is just the you know this this looked like last year's team, just getting by. You know we aren't blowing out the teams we're supposed to be blowing out. And I'm not saying we should have blown out Northwestern. I'm saying I wanted eight to nothing, but I'm saying we probably should have won this game somewhere in like a 35-14 range, where Northwestern has a d okay showing, but Ohio State bounces back from their loss, and we didn't really bounce back. We kind of just turned around, I guess. I don't know. I'm trying to find an analogy to bouncing back. Instead of bouncing back, we kind of just hit it and then kind of like slide it down. Uh, I guess is what I'm... I don't know. I'm trying to make some weird analogy. But... Barrett is a very, very talented athlete. Um, he's not the best thrower. He had a guy... He had Clark, James Clark, open deep. And uh, and didn't. Um, sorry if this is a little one-sided in the analysis, but I I'm mean, probably gonna put the title like angry Ohio State fan or something. Um, mm -hmm. But sorry, I got a text. But um, Barrett's not the great at most accurate passer. Um, J T Barrett isn't the best running quarterback. I mean, obviously Lamar Miller and other people make opportunities that make him not you know. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but he's obviously not the best. Um, but he's he is a leader um, for sure. He he won us this game. Um, he looked good. He looked good today. I would like to say that he looked much better in the first half than he did in the second half. But his throwing stats, um, I'm not actually sure what his throwing stats are. Um, I didn't have again. I didn't write down anything today, so I don't really have any of this stuff pulled up. So I do apologize. I'm on my phone just right now, looking uh, looking at some stuff. Mike Weber. Why did we only give him the ball like three times until that final drive where we were just running out of clock? Um, total offense, 431, 406. Uh, we had one turnover. Or no, they had one turnover. We had zero turnovers, which is good because we've had problems with that. Um, third down conversions, they were 50%. We were like 60, like a little above 60, I think, like 63. But fourth down conversions, they were two for two. They were gutsy. I'll give it to that. Fitz, Pat, I think his first name is Pat. Uh, Fitzgerald uh, was gutsy. Um, Justin Jackson, the running back, didn't have a great game. Uh, Clayton Thornson um, wasn't even above 500% like passing for 256 yards and a touchdown. Um, and then Austin Carr, their freaking tight end, for 158 yards, eight catches. And then Garrett Dickerson, eight, 43 and one. I mean, that's the only guys that really caught passes. There's a couple guys with two. One Justin Jackson, the running back, had three, and then two guys with one. But they are. They were doing the little out route. They were doing mesh routes where the two people were coming across on drag routes, and we just didn't know how to stop it. And we kind of figured it out nearing the end. But it. I don't know. It. We. We have to game plan better. Our offensive play callers have to play call better. Luke Fickle is one of the best defensive coordinators in the nation, hands down. One of the best defensive coordinators in the nation, and I think our defense is the reason that we beat Wisconsin. I think our defense is the reason we won this game. Um, and if we had won Penn State, they would have been the reason we won that game. Um, you could even argue they were the reason we won against Indiana, even though our offense did put up 38 points. Our offense just cannot find a rhythm. We try to go no huddle. We try to go up tempo. Uh, it just doesn't work. It just uh, I'm Mike Weber is a power running back. Okay, so give him the ball to power run. Don't try to do what you do with Curtis Samuel with Mike Weber. JT Barrett. We don't need to run with him nearly as much as we had the past three games. We didn't run with him as much today. Uh, let me see how much we ran with him. We ran only 13 times, so he's averaging like 22. Weber, 1487, two touchdowns. 
great game. Curtis Samuel, 731 a touchdown. Not his best game on the ground. He only averaged like 4.4 yards a carry. And he, one of those was on like a 23-yard gain. Um... Barrett, 21-32, 233, 2-2-3, excuse me, 223. No interceptions, no touchdowns. He didn't turn the ball over. And that's all really you have to ask for him. Uh, Curtis Samuel led our team in receptions and yards, and then Noah Brown. No one else. Okay, Mike Weber had three catches, but those are just little f the flare outs that we do. Which I'll get to the this is gonna be one of the longer postgame analysis because I, I am a biased opinion on this, and I'm not gonna lie about that. Um, KJ Hill had that big 34-yard catch. Marcus Ball had that big drop, although it didn't. He did make up for it in the late, later in that drive. Um, Dontre Wilson did not get involved. We had another blocked freaking punt. Give him a chance at the end of the second half. Johnston uh, is one of the best punters in the nation. Um, he, if you go back and look at the twenty thirteen national championship game where we beat Alabama, uh, or yeah, we're not the national championship game, but the Sugar Bowl where we beat Alabama. And you look at just the like the punts that he did. He is one of the best punters in the nation, if not the best. Uh, and a big part of it is his running up rugby style kick. But he has to understand how far to run up. If they're bringing it, don't run up. Or if you're gonna run up, I don't know, just don't run towards the guys. Run away from them or something. I don't. I mean, it doesn't mean run backwards and then turn around and kind of kick it. But against Penn State, he took too many steps forward. And then in today's one. It looked fairly clean. I don't think he took too many sets, but I think he took too long to drop the ball and freaking punt it. Johnston, normally one of my favorite Ohio State players. Um, today, uh, he struggled. He struggled the past two weeks. Um, Dontre Wilson didn't muff a punt today. Um, if you're an Ohio State fan, you understand. I think we may need a new returner. I, I, don't, I think we should maybe put Harris Campbell back there. Uh, he, did, he had that really big, good kick return against Indiana. Um... I don't know, at least try it. Wilson hasn't been making any explosive plays uh, in the power return game. I mean, the blocking hasn't really been there, so I don't know how much of a blame can really be put on him. But, uh, and he, he's muffed like three or something this year. I, I think he's recovered all of them, or we have, re Ohio State's recovered all of them, but we can't have fumbles. You know, we can't afford any turnovers, especially if, if we're barely uh, going to play um, offense. Play calling is not what I'm going to talk about. Uh, I should have a little transition slide, but I'm not, because I don't want to do that. Um, play calling was, is a big reason, in my opinion, why we are struggling on offense. There were too many attempts where we tried to just flare it out to our running backs, either it was Curtis Samuel or Mike Weber. I mean, they combined for 10 of, like, the 21 completions, and Samuel maybe had, like, three legit catches and probably four flare outs, somewhere around there. I'm not sure of my complete stats. The only receiver that really caught a pass was Noah Brown with five. Um, and then, of course, a couple guys with one, but we, we can't do that. When we run the ball, run Curtis Samuel where he can use his speed. We have the fastest running back we've had it since Beanie Wells, maybe. There's a few other, you know, maybe, Beanie, he's probably, I think Dontre, Dontre Wilson's faster than Beanie Wells. Um, but, or excuse me, Curtis Samuel, Dontre Wilson's number two, but I think Kurt, Dontre Wilson's probably faster. But Curtis Samuel is the one of the fastest running backs we've had at Ohio State in a while. Okay? He isn't like Carlos Hyde. He isn't like Ezekiel Elliott. Now, Elliott was pretty quick, and he had a decent power asset to him. That's why he's one of the best NFL running backs this year, um, if not the best uh, in yards-wise, at least. But uh, we, we don't need to try to do what we've done in the past four years, ever since we've had Meyer, really, which is we've had Hyde or Elliott. We can't just run up the middle with him. He got his touchdown on a run that was kind of up the middle. We should sweep him around. Jet sweep. Reverses. Um, when they're when the running backs are, you know, one on each side, like Weber Samuel and I'm say I'm JT Barrett, give him the ball where he's gonna run like that. Or give Mike Weber the ball where he's gonna run like that, because Mike Weber can truck people. There was a play at the end of the game, um, which got us our first down, which actually I think ended up sealing the game, where he just carried a guy with him for five, six yards. Because he can do that. He is a power running back. He is like Ezekiel Elliott and Carlos Hyde. If we're going to use Curtis Samuel in the run game, then we need to use him correctly, and I don't think we are. Next topic. Receivers. Are they just not getting open? <laughs> okay. Barrett looked better in the passing game today, but we didn't. We took one deep shot, and that was Barrett's fault that he missed it. KJ, the one KJ Hill wasn't even a deep throw. 
He was just left wide open. It was a busted coverage. <sighs> I don't know. I know Noah Brown's not the fastest. I know he has really good hands. He, I think he's a pretty good route runner. Um, Marcus Bott had a pretty good game last week in the loss. Paris Campbell to get carted off today. I hope he's okay. Um, be sure to keep up with that injury news. I don't know. We just There seems to be no one open except for Curtis Samuel. I don't know. We we don't make enough downfield passes, which has kind of been the complaint the past couple years with Ohio State. Is That's been our vertical passing game. Um, I guess that's all I'm about to say. Northwestern, I don't know if our, we had a bad game or if you had a good game. I think you have a decent team. I don't want to overhype you when you go and lose to Wisconsin next week because I think you will. Um, and I think you'll lose probably worse than just by four points. Because I think if we play the type of game we played today or last week against Wisconsin, which we did for the first half, but we stepped it up in the second, then we would have lost that game. Um, and probably wouldn't have been in overtime. It would have just been regulation. <clears throat> so, I, yeah, I know I try, I try to keep myself calm. Um, I'll probably just put Ohio State fan. Because, um, you know, I'm not that angry. But... We have to step up. Someone's going to have to step up on this team. Barrett can't do it all. Okay, Barrett had a pretty good day. I'm not going to take that away from him. But he he can't do it all. I mean, that's just simple truth. Someone on our receiving core has to step up. Brown, I thought, was going to step up after his Oklahoma game, but then hasn't done much since. I mean, he's probably been our number one receiver, but still he hasn't really, I mean, do we even have our receivers even running routes? I don't know. They look like they're out there, but then once Barrett starts looking, it seems like no one's open except for our running back out of the backfield or Marcus Ball. So I don't know. Um, running game, we just have to use our running backs in the right way. You can't power it up with Samuel. He's not a power running back. He is a speed back. He's a Percy Harvin type player, and they don't give Percy Harvin the ball to run straight up the middle. Or to do his zone read and make him go between the tackle and the guard. Because they're not just going straight between the center and the guard. But they're going between the tackle and the guard with him. Send him around the tackle. Let him go down the sideline. Like he, the play against Penn State. I don't know. Um, TCU lost. Got that alert too. Uh, if you're an Ohio State fan, definitely give me your opinion. If you're a Northwestern fan, give me your opinion. Um, I thank you guys. Once again, decent team. Best of luck next week. Best of luck the rest of the season. Ohio State has to step up their game. And if not, we're going to lose to Nebraska next week. And then, say we get by that game, then uh, we have to obviously play Michigan. And Michigan State, who looked actually decent today. Um, although I think that may have just been Michigan not looking their best. Uh, or it could have just been Michigan State playing the hardest in the rivalry. Um, that's all my opinions. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I'll see you guys later.